Hey everyone, welcome to BCP Med. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the unusual boiling point anomaly between hydrogen sulfide and hydrogen chloride, which bucks the typical trend seen among compounds moving towards the right-hand side of the periodic table, where dipole-dipole forces and boiling points typically increase. So, what exactly is our problem? Well, if we take a look at hydrogen sulfide, it has a dipole moment of 0.97 debye's. If we look at hydrogen chloride, HCl, it has a dipole moment of 1.05 debye's, which is more or less what we expect. Chlorine is more electronegative than sulfur, and therefore we expect there to be a larger dipole moment for HCl since there's a larger difference in electronegativity between H and Cl than H and S. So, so far this makes sense. However, we expect that a higher dipole moment will naturally lead to stronger dipole-dipole forces. Stronger dipole forces, or stronger IMFs in general, should lead to a higher boiling point among these compounds. So, based on this information, HCl should have a higher boiling point than hydrogen sulfide, H2S. But it doesn't, right? This sort of breaks down our understanding of what is going on here. If in most compounds, and you see this as we move towards the right-hand side of the periodic table, as the electronegativity difference increases, the strength of the dipole-dipole forces increases, and therefore the boiling point does as well. So what's going on here? Why does hydrogen sulfide have a boiling point that's almost 20 degrees higher than hydrogen chloride when it's actually less polar? What might be happening? So the answer to this comes down to something that we haven't really addressed yet, which is the tricky definition of hydrogen bonding. Typically, when we think of hydrogen bonding, it's between hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, the canonical examples of, oh, there has to be a strongly electronegative element. But that's not necessarily true, right? The UPAC definition, or the International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry, the way they define a hydrogen bond, I'm going to go ahead and read it to you, uh, the hydrogen bond is an attractive interaction between a hydrogen atom from a molecule or a molecular fragment, XH, in which X is more electronegative than H, and an atom or a group of atoms in the same or a different molecule in which there is evidence of a bond formation. Nowhere in this definition does it explicitly state hydrogen bonds can only form between H and O or F. Right? There's no necessity for those elements to be present. It's just typical because those are the most electronegative elements on the table. So when we look at that difference, we see things, oh, nitrogen has an electronegativity of 3, oxygen 3.5, fluorine 4. Those are very, very high. However, chlorine and sulfur also have very high electronegativities. Chlorine is about a 3 and sulfur a little bit lower than that. But, you know, they're no slouches either. They're, you know relatively high as well. And if we look at the hydrogen sulfide molecule with this electrostatic potential diagram, we see that the hydrogens do in fact carry a decent partial positive charge and the sulfur a negative charge. Likewise, if we look at the electrostatic potential diagram for chlorine, we also see that the hydrogen carries a partial positive and the chlorine a negative, in fact, even more so than the hydrogen sulfide. And that makes sense. We know that these molecules are polar, but let's go ahead and keep that in mind open our you know, mind to the possibility that there might be some sort of interesting hydrogen bond case going on. So to really understand what's happening, let's first compare the case of water and hydrogen fluoride, HF. Right? Typically, we would expect, again, HF, being, with F being more electronegative than O, to have a stronger dipole moment, which it does. But in fact, water has a substantially higher boiling point than HF. Both of these compounds H-bond, and as we know, H-bonding to be the strongest intermolecular force, perhaps it has something to do with that. This boiling point trend is based on H-bonding. So if we look at the H-bonding network for these two compounds, we can readily see that water actually forms quite a few more H-bonds in its network than HF does. Water can form four H-bonds, whereas hydrogen fluoride can only form two, a do one donation and one acceptor. So... It turns out that the reason that water has a higher boiling point is not because it's more polar per se, HF has a larger electronegativity difference than H2O, but because both are capable of donating this hydrogen bond, 
Water, since it can donate and accept more, has the higher boiling point, the stronger H bonding IMF. We can then look at this example of H2O, as an, of H2O and HF as analogous to our case with hydrogen sulfide and HCl. Right? These elements are almost identical in their chemical properties, sulfur and oxygen and fluorine and chlorine. They're in the same groups, they're just down one period. So they're going to behave very similarly, and so it's reasonable to ex expect that there's this same uh, jump between the two groups, right? That the group 17 hydrogen compounds with fluorine and chlorine will be slightly lower than the group 16 compounds with oxygen and sulfur. And in fact, we do see that as the case. So knowing that hydrogen bonds are possible in this situation, it seems that that is the likely culprit for our anomalous boiling point. It seems that hydrogen sulfide does actually go ahead and form some sort of hydrogen bond where the extra hydrogen contributes sufficiently to strengthen the IMFs. And although it's the same trend, I want to point out here, notice how much weaker the difference is and the absolute boiling points as well. Right? Although we can consider H2S and HCl as H bonding, the boiling points are 100 degrees Celsius less, or 200 degrees Celsius less even than water, than what we're talking about the boiling points for the uh, period above, the H2O to HF. These are much, much weaker, right? These are in no way the canonical H bonds that we think of that hold together DNA, that hold together proteins. These are not it. These are a markedly weaker interaction. They're not, it's not, you know, it's important to understand this uh, anomalous trend, but we shouldn't think about it in the same capacity, just as an explanatory tool. And with that, we've actually gone ahead and finished our content for this video. Uh, if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe to the channel. And please check out our other videos on explaining intermolecular forces and other boiling point trends. See you next time.